Okay, let's get this master cylinder off. I know you're supposed to have line wrenches to do this with, but I don't know where mine went to, so it don't happen. So we're gonna have to just make do with something else. Some reason the fittings on this brake system up here are metric, I think. I was testing these and they're metric, 15 millimeter. I don't know why, but they are. This one's probably not metric, but nine sixteenths. Fat. Let's try this. Yeah, that would be a nine sixteenths or a half probably. One of those two, don't care which really. This will take it off. That was very loose, but we'll tighten them up with a proper. We'll probably tighten it up with that, that's all we got, really. No, we can use that. We can use a wrench on it, I guess. Yeah, that's actually too small. Too big rather. So the hummingbirds have nearly left. There's about three or four left here. And they may not be the ones that were here this summer because this is migration time and the, the ones that are migrating from north up north are coming to stop somewhere and feed. Do this one first. So he's only got two bolts to hold it on. That's strange because the Mopars usually use about four. Let me get my stool. Yep. Would come out of the back of this thing now. Got a real problem here. Yeah. Uh, what's up here? Yep, sure enough. Let's 
flicking right out of the back. Right where that piston is there. Uh, yep, yeah, like a reman too. It's fairly recent. Oh well. Yeah, you can if you look at it over here and see. Take off of here. You can see where it's been gripping that. I hope I didn't take that booster out. It's not good for one to be leaking down in here, but maybe. See, it's all been. Yep. Great. Great. Okay, I got to get in there and bench blade the new one. Let's go do that now. Okay, that's on. So, I'm going to have to leave the brakes now. I couldn't find my bench blader kit after putting everything, moving everything out of the shop into the shed out there I put up. So, I have to just do the best we can. So, we're going to start with the furthest away or the most far away wheel center which is the right rear and then we'll do the left rear and then we'll go to the front uh, I've got put I put two lug, nut, lug nuts back on there just to keep the drum from popping off uh, accidentally because I don't want to put the wheels back on right now because we get done bleeding things we well, uh, well, while we're bleeding, it just gives me better access. And I just, all I do to bleed these myself, people have different methods, but I generally just find myself a, some sort of a rod or a stick or something that I can push the brake, pump the brake pedal and then wedge it against the seat or the floor or something and kind of hold it where I need it. So it takes a little bit of trial and error, but I'll work something out and it'll work. So let's do that now. Okay, since I couldn't bench bleed this, I'm having to bleed it at the master cylinder a couple times to get a pedal. So I've done it once and got a little bit of a pedal, so I'll do it again. Okay, I just got air out of the rear one. Let me go do this again. Man, these stink bugs are gonna drive us crazy. Spitting some air out still, so that one. Oops. Okay, now. Right, so. Get away! It landed right on my hat. You want to see my arrangement to bleed the brakes with? You're going to laugh at this one. <laughs> Couple pieces of firewood. <laughs> Works. We have not had rain to speak of in nearly a month. We've had a couple days that we had maybe a 10 minute rain shower and that's it. Uh, drought. So anyway, we're going to continue this afternoon, this evening, it's actually the evening, it's the sun's going down actually. But I had to wait because it's so hot. So I went ahead and got home, went for my bike ride and then launched back in on this. I want to get this done. So, as you recall, in the last clip there, uh, I had 
replace these brakes back here and I thought that was all my problem with this thing pulling to the left but as it turned out when I came down the driveway I made a couple hard applications of the brakes and it drugged the left front wheel which you know it's supposed to do that anyway it's on gravel that's no problem but it's only drugged the left front wheel so the right front's not working and that would explain the pull so uh, I got over there and looked at that other uh, caliper and it looks a little bit more recent than this one this one looks original as a matter of fact it's on the ground right there and the line over here looks original and the one all the stuff over on that left side that's working it looks newer the line looks very new so went and pulled that caliper off and I had plenty of fluid in the caliper so I don't know you know it was getting fluid so I'm not going to condemn the line right now but I'm going to replace that line and I'm going to replace that caliper because they're too cheap to you know it's under thirty dollars for a reman caliper with a warranty and I'm just not going to fool with it I'm just going to put a new one on and be done with it because I don't take chances with brakes I know there's people that would take it apart and try to fix it and blah blah but I'm not going to I'm not interested in that so what I am going to do is I'm going to put you guys in the tripod here if I can get the tripod lined up there we are and oh, goodness. we're going to take our seat clamp and we're going to see if this thing is stuck it was really should have a reason for not working and the uh it wasn't the the caliper was free i mean it wasn't stuck on the pins or anything pins weren't stuck so anyway let's get on with that before it gets dark on us got my nice new moving blanket here so I'm aim it away from me and put the sea clamp in here now it should move fairly easily and it may do that. that was, this may not be conclusive, but we're gonna just see what we get here. If you're working on one of these trucks, one thing to remember is that the front brakes are different between the trucks that have the 11 inch and some odd, uh, the small rear brakes and the ones that like this one have the 13 inch brakes takes two different uh, calipers and they're easily available they're at, the, at the local parts store so, grief. how deep is this thing how deep is it mm. <coughs> that's stuck <laughs> that's it that's what's wrong with it have you guys been able to even see what I'm doing? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Anyway, okay, back to where we were. <laughs> Man, I need help. Really need help. Help, help, help. Dumb old camera. All right, let's try this again. Anyway, what I'm doing, I got my C-clamp on here. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I'm just trying to crank this piston back in. It'll barely try to go just a little. <clears throat> but that's stuck. It's got a stuck caliper, so that's what was wrong with it. So this brake's not even been working, I guess. And the good thing is it didn't take out the pads. The pads look good, so I don't have to put pads on it. So, all right. Well, that's enough of that noise. Jeez. As I said, I think this truck sat for a long time not running. It sat somewhere so long that the bottom of the one of the gas tanks rusted out. So that's that was before I got it. The guy that I got it from said that he had to replace one of the gas tanks because it was rusted out. So okay, well, you know that it's just typical when you got an old car truck, you man. You just Anything that's got fluid in it, with the possible exception of the oil system, oiling system, usually it's going to, like cooling or brakes or fuel, you're just going to have to go through and start replacing stuff. Because if it doesn't fail right away, it's going to. So, stuck caliper. So, put full set of rear brake shoes, 
two wheel cylinders, master cylinder, and now a right front caliper. This keeps out the only thing I'm not going to end up replacing is the brake pedal. Oh yeah, I forgot the uh, the emergency brake cable. All right, guys. Well, I've had a long one, and so I'm going to go in, call today, and I got to turn that thing in as a core. There's a fifteen dollars core on it, so I think the oh 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 O'Reilly's down in Huntsville, the one on uh, Bob Boss that I always go to, always has everything. They've got one, so I think it's them that's got it. No, that's right. Well, I looked up a list of stuff and it seemed like one well, they didn't have something. It might have been the brake shoes, but I think they got the caliper. That don't matter anyway. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to where the caliper's at. <laughs> That's all I'll do. I'm just going to drive to where the caliper is and get it. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me. And uh, I'll get back in on this um, pretty soon. And maybe tomorrow we'll get it finished back up. And hopefully we'll go for a test drive here soon. So, all right. Well, talk to you then. So then I'm back off the road again my old trip I was making for work and uh, I'm going to get this thing finished up with these brakes hopefully I picked up an, a reman caliper it's the only kind I can get I don't know where a new one sold at so got this one in the hardware and I uh, also what else brake line I'll replace this brake line you can see the bracket on the new one's not near as nice as the old one but that's typical should work and first thing I've got to do just come in here. I've got to get this whole line off, and it's got sort of a weird arrangement here. The way it's retained into the frame of the truck, the lines on the back side of it there, the hard line, but it's got this uh, threaded part here and a little nut and a clip that goes up against that, and this what goes on the back of that threaded shank right there i guess you could call it is just this big sheet metal nut of a thing about a three quarter or a seven eighths inch deal there and it holds it to the frame and then the hard line back there just screws into this end like they all do so it's not very easy to get to so i think what i'm going to do first is uh, i'm going to have to probably i'm going to take that old retaining clip off so I have some movement on this thing and then I'll start trying to take the nut off back there because <clears throat> that that fitting is tight of course it's never been off I guess and uh, I can't really get in there with anything very easily to take that uh, that hard line loose so let's try that see how that goes <clears throat> all right I'm going to try to <clears throat> excuse me try to show you this what we're looking at at the back as well as possible all right so if you uh right there if you can kind of peer up in there hang on Let's see if i can kind of reposition a little bit here whoa nope i don't think so i'll try to do this as best i can so where are we at all right okay so if you look there's a hard line and then there's the end of that threaded into the end of that hose I just showed you and then there's that large nut that holds it to the frame so I got that clip out there I showed you first I got it off it it gave up pretty easily so now I'm going to try to thread off that large nut right there and just run it down the line out of the way and then hopefully my plan is I can pull carefully pull that hard line through the frame to get access to it from the outside so I can try to get that loosen where I can see it oh yeah that's turning now no problem there we go you know, I can't see it but it's hanging out right there that's very good it's good news I'm just gonna have to influence it. you ever guys you guys ever seen this thing on YouTube that people people that have never been nobody know how they get on youtube and they start telling people giving people advice and stuff and all this and showing people how 
exercise and this and that and every damn thing you think of. And now they're called influencers. What the hell's an influencer? I don't need to be influenced. I don't want to be influenced. I don't want to do any of that. Okay, that's going to be very tight to do right there. And it may not happen, but I want to see. If not, I can go the other way with it and go get some room. So let me wrestle that a little bit and see what I can do. I may have shot myself in the foot, but I think I got to have some room in there regardless. All right. All right, so uh, the line is on finally with some effort. Got it temporarily pinched gently so it won't leak on my fluid out while I'm working with this. So, all right, we got to do this cowper. And you got just a cowper, and then you got two pins that go in it. And they're already, I can see they're already lubricated there, but uh, I'm also going to put just a little bit of uh, anti seize on these threads right here because these threads actually thread into that cowper bracket. So you don't want them seizing up, especially if you live in a salt climate and probably gonna put a little bit here too because if there's lube in there there's not very much so we'll do that and then we're going to slap this thing on put the brake pads back in slap it on hook it up all right then uh this next step is critically important this is time to put the brake line on and it just goes it bolts into the back of the caliper right back here and the kit supplies you with um, a new bolt right there and you see there's two copper washers in here these are critically important that you put these back on and put them in the right orientation if you look at your brake line you got this is called a banjo fitting and you got a spot here for one where it goes against the caliper and then you got one on the other side where it goes below the head of the bolt so it goes from outside to inside, it goes bolt, copper washer, line, copper washer, brake caliper. So do not do not leave those out under any circumstances. You can get, if for some reason your kit doesn't have them, then uh, you can either, the best place to go get them is go to Harbor Freight and get a multi-pack of them. They give you like, however how many in one of those boxes. Same exact thing, it worked fine. So, so don't leave those out. So I actually got extras because the brake line came with some and then the caliper came with some. And uh, this is the old one, one of the old ones. And you can see how it's taken, it's conformed to the, <clears throat> they start out flat, but they, it's conformed to the uh, contours of, sorry about that, of the, uh, the brake caliper and the line mostly the line so you can't reuse that don't reuse those don't ever reuse those don't even think about reusing them and there's probably no reason to use the bolt either if you don't have to you probably could if it came down to it but you can see that bolt's sort of like a carburetor jet it's got it's a special bolt it's got I'm trying to get it with the camera picked up it's got a little hole in it right there in the side and then it passes through the center of it so that's all junk now you don't have to use that so anyway and past that i got that ready to go and then i got this uh caliper on if you're ever putting a caliper on or you're putting brake pads on one of these yeah kind of a weird arrangement it's not weird once you understand it but the brake pads have the outers have a hole in them for this slider pin to go through and then the inside back here has to have it has to be up over the outside outside of the pin you have to sit kind of lay on the pin otherwise it goes falling down in there and it'll be mispositioned and cause you all sorts of grief so i'm going to go ahead and connect this line up and commence with the brake bleeding i've left that stuff back here it's connected tightly but it's not secured to the truck yet because i want to make sure i don't have any leaks before i get into trying to tighten that thing down I don't think I'm going to give this thing a, a loose job because it doesn't look like it's been any grease put in it in quite a while. And I'm thinking, I don't know, I could be way off base, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to break down and put a new transmission pan or something on this truck. It's either got, either the pan is still leaking, which is hard for me to believe, 
after the way I fixed it or it to leak from the front somewhere else. I don't think it's a, you can kind of, I know this is getting off the subject, but you can kind of usually get an idea about, <laughs> well, that's vague, isn't it? You can usually get an idea about where a leak is coming from, whether it's like a pressure leak or a seal leak that's a gasket leak because of when it leaks. Like if there's a front seal leak and that's under pressure, that's right up at the front pump and so it's running with pressure behind it so it would normally leak while it runs and this one doesn't do that. This one lends to leak when it sits, like especially the longer it sits, when the level of fluid and transmission raises. So it's, I was looking at it, it's got a few points up there that can leak. Obviously the pan, the pan's in bad shape, we already know that. And it also has a modulator valve on this side of the transmission, which has an O-ring on it, and that thing feels a little bit loose. So that's a suspect there. And then on the other side, it's got a shifter shaft. That's where the, the shaft that goes into the valve body to, you know, turn the, the where you put it in gear, all that, that, that deal. It's supposed to have an O-ring in it, and it looks pretty dry. I don't see that really being an issue, but it's... It's got something going on. This thing it just keeps on leaking, and I—I'm actually—we're actually looking at the oil pan on the engine, aren't we? <laughs> There's the transmission pan. Got an oil leak too. This thing is—the <laughs> more I've driven it, the more it's leaked. <laughs> Even the steering box is leaking. <laughs> yeah, Chevy. <laughs> All right. Well, let me button this up. Okay, I've done the things. I have. Uh, down out of the way there. Uh, bled out all the brakes, front and rear, and got a good pedal, nice iron pedal, and topped up. Oh, wait a minute. That reminded me. Uh -oh. Yep, you get older, you start forgetting things. You gotta prompt yourself. I think I forgot something here. Hang on a second. Got to look at the nothing there for a flip. There we go. That <laughs> God, the heap. That boiler motor tends to seize up every once in a while. So. You know this thing goes in reverse, like it just slams in reverse. And there's been a lot of threads about that. Why they do that? It's because it's been rebuilt and. When they rebuilt it, they took out the wave plate that's in, the, I think, the third gear clutch pack. So that's also used for reverse. They took it out so it would firm up the second to third shift, but it also, the wave plate sort of absorbs movement, so it would engage reverse a little bit slower if that was in there, but the opposite's not. It ain't gonna hurt it. far no pull no pull no pull get it sort of in the center of the road here and we'll see
Well, the wheel's not pulling itself, so I take that as a win. Feels good. Of course, it still has these squishy brakes that GMs always have in this this era. They don't feel anything like manual brakes. They're just kind of they're squishy, even when you bleed them out. Even with all new parts, they're squishy. yard sale there. There's a story going on with those people in that house, but I don't know what it is. They cut all their trees down going up the driveway and left those beautiful stumps there. Why did they do that? See those beautiful trees? That's what they used to look like. But they got out there over about two or three weeks and cut every one of them down. People think things look better without trees around it. They do not, in my opinion. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let's give this a little test, shall we? Get going. We're not paying attention. We're looking at our cell phone. All of a sudden, we see a stop sign. What do we do? All right. That worked pretty good, didn't it? All right. Hi. Right. I'm going to drive on to the gas station. If you want to know what the hub of civilization is in this little burg that I live in, you're about to see it right now. This gas station, <laughs> always like this, always. And they actually, you can see up there, they added more pumps onto this thing. It used to be just right that row right there. And it was always full, you can never get in here. But it's like this every day, like this. Where do you go ahead and go, go ahead and go. And you know why? It's like this. It's because this place has everything. Snacks, pizza, lottery, milk, beer, cigarettes, smokeless tobacco. It's seriously, this place has everything. Everything every redneck and non-redneck would ever need in their lives is right here in this place. No joke. All right, I gotta go. I think that works pretty good now. Thanks for watching.